Okay, back to work destroying this thing. <laughs> Why haven't I posted any videos in a few months? Well, if the weather would ever cooperate, I might be able to work on my car again. Seems like every nice day we have just happens to fall on one of my work days where I'm stuck in the office, can't get out. And then on my off days, we get sleet and snow and rain and just freezing cold. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be replacing a part that is notorious for failing on Miatas. So I'm in the Miata and I'm having a problem getting the car to go into gear and stay in gear. What's happening is it'll go into gear but then it will start to the, the pedal will go all the way to the floor when I try to push it in and the clutch won't engage. So what's happening is it'll get stuck in that gear and I basically have to turn the engine off for it to go back into neutral and to pump the clutch a few times to build up pressure. Um, and that could only mean a couple of things to look at. All right, so there's two things that I'm gonna be replacing today and that is the clutch master cylinder, which is right here and also the slave cylinder, which is on this side of the engine behind the wheel. So what happens here, um, these are notorious for failing on most Miatas. Uh, this car, I, I'm assuming these are the original. Um, I don't have any other documentation that says otherwise, so it's got 140,000 miles on it. So I guess it is past its time. Um, now usually when a slave cylinder fails, it's usually leaking somewhere, but if you look at the, the levels on the master cylinder, it's filled all the way to the top. So I'm not sure if it's actually leaking there or not, but it's always been my rule of thumb that if you're going to swap one out, you need to swap them both at the same time. That way it'll just, it'll fix the problem. You'll rule out any other issues. Um, you know with your hydraulic system for the clutch so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this and uh, I've I got to get this done tonight so I'm gonna try to do this real quick I'll try to film as much of the steps as possible and uh, let you know it's not a difficult job at all uh, it should be pretty quick but it's gonna take me a little bit longer just because I'm filming this for you guys so enjoy let's get started Okay, so this is the guy we're going to be working on today. So what I'm going to do is put some paper towels underneath, 
just to catch any spillage. And if you've got any kind of uh, way to extract the fluid out of this, then this would be the time to do it. Uh, this uses brake fluid in your clutch hydraulic system. Um, I've got a power extractor. I know this is overkill, but it's all I've got right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, fluid taken out, and then I can start unbolting things. Give me just a second. Okay, now that I've got the fluid uh, mostly removed from the uh, uh, cylinder here, I'm going to take a flare nut wrench. You could probably use a box wrench, but the best thing to use on these is a flare nut wrench, uh, 10 millimeter, and I'm going to remove the hard line. All right, so I've got the hard line removed. That just pulls right out. So the next thing you need to do is remove a bolt on the bottom here and a bolt up top also right there. And I believe these are going to be 12 millimeter, uh, but I'll have to verify that with my socket here. So bear with me. Let me get my sockets out and we'll just remove those bolts and it pulls right out. All right, so I'm using a 12 millimeter extended uh, socket head here on my uh, ratchet, and I'm going to try to get this bottom one first and then the top one. All right, I think a ratcheting uh, box wrench here, like this one. We'll do a better job on the top one. I was having a little bit of an issue reaching it with just my extended uh, ratchet there. All right, I've got that taken care of. Now I'm just going to pull it out. See how it just slides out like that. And this is your master cylinder. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of wipe this down here. And that is what, uh, your, that's where your master cylinder goes. We're gonna put the new one in, but before I'm just going to uh, kind of bench fill it with uh, some brake fluid just to kind of get it primed and uh, then I'll put it in. So I went with the uh, Power Torque, which is the O'Reilly's in-house brand. Um, you can pick whatever brand of these that you like, but uh, this does come with a lifetime warranty, so I figured if it ever fails, you know, I'll just get another one. And this isn't a difficult job to do, so um, no big deal. I'm going to be using DOT4 brake fluid. You can use DOT3 or DOT4 or mix the two together, which is kind of what I'm doing since I'm not totally flushing the lines out. Um, it might flush out when I bleed the, the uh, clutch, but some may still stay in there and that's fine. Um, uh, the DOT4 just handles higher heat cycles, so that's not a big deal. Uh, dot three works perfectly fine, so don't worry about that kind. Just make sure it's either dot three or dot four brake fluid. Okay, so I put just a little bit in there, kind of like uh, to the 
the minimum line here. And uh, what I'm going to do is stick a screwdriver in here just to push it in. And then I'm going to cover up the hole here. And when I release, it's going to suck this fluid down into the cylinder here. And that just makes sure that you have fluid in here when you first start pumping it because just you don't want to wear out any uh, components inside here, the seals and whatnot. So it's always a good idea to do this before you put it in the car. All right, so some of that got sucked down in there and we're ready to install it. All right, so you just want to orientate this to where it fits over the bolts and that this shaft here goes into the center. Start hand threading on the bolts. So I got this mounted to the firewall and now I just put this uh, hard line in and I put it in finger tight. Now I'm just going to go back to my flare nut wrench, my 10 millimeter, and just start tightening this up. And we'll be done with this part of the job. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work on the slave cylinder and it's going to be on the passenger side for uh, North American cars um, and it's going to be right over here on the side of, let's see if you can see that, that guy right there. It's right, right here. So this is very similar to the master cylinder to where you basically need a flare nut wrench to get the hard line off and then you unbolt it from the side of the, the engine. I believe there are also 12 millimeter um, bolts, but uh, that's, that's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the hard line first, then I will unbolt the cylinder. Okay, so here's some better lighting. And let me see if I can get my arm in here also. I'm going to undo the, the hard line first, and then the top and the bottom bolt right there. The top one you can reach from up here Bottom one is easier to reach laying down underneath the car. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Just three bolts and then it's off. So of course I ran into a problem. The hard line going to the slave cylinder is rusted shut and I cannot get that bolt to turn. It's starting to round off. I'm even using the correct tool, which is a flare nut wrench. Uh, it's just rusted on too much, so I'm letting it soak in penetrating oil right now and I'm going to try a couple methods and we'll see if we can get this thing to spin off. Um, I'll let you know what I eventually use to get it off if I can get it off, so wish me luck. Okay, so I've done everything that I can think of as far as, uh, you know, tapping on it with a hammer just to break off the rust, using penetrating oil. Um, just uh, using the flare nut wrench, I've used an open socket wrench, um, I've tried everything I can think of. Last resort is using heat. Now I'm going to be using propane, which isn't the hottest heat. If you've got a map gas uh, torch, that's actually hotter, uh, but this should work fine also. It's just going to take longer to heat up the area. So what I'm going to attempt to do is not heat the actual bolt, but heat the base that it screws into just so it will expand those threads and loosen up the screw uh, that's, that's rusted in there. So I'm going to go spend a few minutes warming it up with this, and then I'm going to use the, the flare nut run, wrench again. If that doesn't work, I'm going to heat it up some more and then use some vice grips of some sort and see if I can force it off. So we'll see if this works. If not, I'm almost out of ideas, but 
we can always just replace the entire line itself with the slave cylinder attached to it. Uh, it just means I have to go, you know, either make a line or buy maybe a stainless uh, threaded, you know, line or whatever. Wish me luck. Okay, so far I've been unsuccessful in getting the hard line unscrewed from the uh, slave cylinder itself. So what I did now is I removed the top and bottom bolt holding the slave cylinder to the, the engine there. That way I can see if I can hold the line with some vice grips and try to spin the cylinder the opposite direction uh, just to see if I can loosen it up at all. Um, this is kind of a last ditch effort, but um, yeah, I've, I've already tried uh, the propane tank and it, uh, you know, it lit it up to where it was glowing red. Um, so I know that it was hot enough for sure, but um, I don't know. Um, if I can't get this off, um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I may have to get a new clutch line and just remove the whole thing as one piece. So um, let me work on this for a few more minutes and I'll uh, let you know what happens here in just a few minutes. Okay, so I'm barely getting it to turn and the way I did it was pulled it closer to me uh, just because that hard line, even though it's a hard line, it, it is malleable so it can kind of bend a little bit over towards you. So I'm pulling it closer towards me. I'm grabbing the bottom with the channel locks here just to hold it on that little tab. So that's what I'm holding still and then I'm using vice grips on the actual bolt. And of course it's just shredding that uh, bolt all up but at least it is starting to turn a tiny tiny bit. So I'm going to keep working on this. I've been uh, using the torch to heat up the outside of the cylinder uh, around the bolt and I'm also using penetrating oil to kind of loosen it up so I'm going to keep working on this and hopefully we'll have this thing loose soon enough. So I've been twisting this around and holding it with vice grips and now I've gotten to the point where it's just on finger tight so I can loosen this actually with my finger and it's about to come free. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Slave cylinder is out. Okay, this is the new slave cylinder. And you put it back in the same way that uh, the old one came out. Uh, you just remove this cap here. And now you can start screwing in the uh, hard line. So I'm going to try to do this finger tight first. And then I'm just going to do some vice grips again to torque it down uh, just so there's no leaks. And then I'm going to bolt it to the side of the, the trans there. And uh, hopefully that'll fix this. Um, if I have problems with this line, I may end up ordering like a stainless steel braided line uh, and just do a full swap of the, the, the clutch line. Alright, so it's a success. I've got the new slave cylinder installed, got the hard line attached. All that's left to do is to bleed the clutch line. And I'm going to wait until tomorrow to do that when I've got someone to help me, um, you know, pushing on the clutch pedal while I bleed this uh, line here. And also check for leaks and make sure that the hard line is not leaking anywhere. So, I will rejoin you tomorrow. We finally have a nice day above freezing. 
Got my super cute kids in their Mini Cooper S cruising the town. Okay, so I lied. It's been a few days since I swapped out the slave and the master, and uh, I'm still not getting any pressure in the hydraulic system here. My suspicion is that I just tore up the, the flare nut that attaches uh, the hard line to the slave, and it must be leaking air of some sort. Um, so what I did is I bought a stainless steel braided hose that I'm going to run from the master cylinder all the way to the slave cylinder and uh, that way I just have one complete system here uh, composing of three parts um, and that should do the job hopefully okay so to remove this hard line I'm going to remove it from the slave cylinder first and I'm going to have to use my vice grips again to loosen that which it's already pretty loosened, so it's not on there too snug. Then you got to follow it up. It comes up to here, right here. Um, I've got to undo this, follow it around over here to the master there. And there is a tricky part right down here. You can't see it because of the shadow, but that's uh, another part that I have to disconnect uh, in order to get this hard line out. Um, but really that's it. It's not a whole lot to it, but um, let's see. Yeah, just, just getting it out from, from that part, you have to unbolt a few things just to get to it. And then of course, right there, which isn't on too tight either. So what I'm going to do first is drain the fluid out, and then I'm going to uh, start undoing these lines and uh, get the new one installed. All right, so I've got a light on it there. You can see where that nut that's attaching the hard line to the slave cylinder is just gnawed up from me getting it off and on with the vice grips. So I'm going to use the vice grips again and remove it. My feeling is that um, this may be the point of failure right now because right now that slave cylinder is not engaging when I push the clutch in. Um, and I've tried bleeding it, and it's just not moving any air, so it's losing suction somewhere, uh, or vacuum rather, and I believe that point is right there at that nut. So let me go ahead and get this removed. You see I've got the needle nose uh, pliers on here uh, locked in place, and it's pretty easy to turn like that. And that's really the way to get these off uh, once it's stripped out. Um, you don't have to put a lot of force now that I've already, you know, cracked it loose. It's just getting a hold of it to, to get it to turn is when you really need these uh, needle nose pliers here. All right, so I've got the hard line loosened up all the way. Now the next thing I need to do is remove the actual uh, mount of that pigtail hard line. Right here, you'll see that there is a 10 millimeter bolt and you'll need an extended reach uh, socket to get to that guy. Once you do that, it's, it's all undone from the bottom. We need to move up top and uh, remove things from up there. All right, I've got that pigtail loose and I'll put the original bolt back in right here. All right, so I remove this part first. Uh, this is just a 10 millimeter uh, open end socket that uh, attaches here. Once you undo that, there's a retaining clip that looks like this. You just grab some pliers and pull this off. It slides off of this like that, and then this one just slides out. So now, the next thing is to remove that guy right there. And you'll see it's another similar clip just like this one here. It's going to be the exact same process. You just have to reach in down there with a with a open end socket wrench here, uh, like this. Also a 10 millimeter, and it's actually not on there very tight, so uh, I was able to break that one free pretty easily. Um, so I just need to undo those hoses and then unsnake it from up here, remove it from the master cylinder, and the hard line will be totally removed. All right, so I've got everything removed from this side. 
the line is completely out. I've just got this hard line here. I just uh, removed this line here and uh, you just have to unattach it from the firewall. And what I think I'm going to do instead of trying to undo all this mess and just fishing it out, I may, since I've got a completely new line that extends the whole way, I may just cut it off right here and then go down there and slide it out. I think it'll be the easiest way and it'll bypass all this mess here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll go ahead and start attaching uh, this guy. This is a full stainless steel braided line that's going to connect one end to the master all the way down to the cylinder, I mean the slave cylinder. All right, let's go. Okay, so there is something you need to know about this new line. Um, they are sold on various Miata websites. Uh, I bought this one at 5X Racing. I, I like those guys a lot, so I'm um, supporting them and got the, the full extended uh, clutch hose that goes from the master to the slave cylinder. But however, unlike the rest of the Miata, the bolts on these are not metric. These are the SAE uh, sized and this guy right here screws into the master first and that is going to be a 9 16 then you put the hard line on and you screw this one on to this one and this one is a half inch okay so 9 16 you'll need a 9 16 wrench and a half inch wrench and then over here on the slave side this one's even smaller. This is a 7 16th. So you'll need a, you know, an SAE uh, socket set. I've got one here that's both metric and SAE. My metrics are over here, and these are all SAEs. So you just kind of have to figure out which ones fit. And like I said, the 7 16th is going to fit on the slave side. So all I have to do now that that is tightened down. I just need to run this down the side here, find a good place to zip tie it to the firewall and connect it to the slave and um, fill up fluid, bleed the clutch and I should be done. Okay, so I've got the line ran how I want it. Uh, I've got it going behind the cylinder and up along the top of the firewall. I ran it underneath this and then through the little uh, bracket that was already there and dropped it down. I'm going to put a zip tie to hold it closer away from the engine. Okay, so I've got a bottle to catch the fluid connected to the bleed valve and that bolt on the bleed valve is an 8 millimeter. What you want to do is have somebody on the inside of the car pump the clutch pedal several times while this is closed. Uh, to build up pressure and then you're going to have them hold the pedal down and loosen it up to let fluid get pushed out through here and then before they release that pedal you tighten it back up so air doesn't get sucked back in and you're going to do that several times and it's going to take a long time and what you need to do is keep going up to the master cylinder make sure that fluid level is going down that just means it's being sucked into the hydraulic system and need to keep it topped off so you don't go dry at the master cylinder. But uh, the key is just patience and this will eventually bleed out. All right, I've got everything put back together now and I'm gonna go give it a test drive. Pedal felt pretty good, so I need, just need to go test it out some more. Clutch plates itself, 
but that's a pretty big job and I don't really need to do that right now. The clutch is still catching. So uh, it is the original clutch and I'm at 140,000 miles. So I'm probably due for sure. But like I said, right now, I'm, I'm not having any issues with it. So I'm just gonna keep using this uh, factory one a little bit longer and then I'll uh, go ahead and swap out the, the clutch plates and flywheel. So if any of you guys need to swap out your clutch hydraulics and you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you wanna see more like this, consider subscribing. Take care, bye.